Hey there, this is Peter again. So today what I want to talk to you about is the importance of building a team and also how you keep your team together. You know, we all here in real estate, you know, you got to build a team, you got to build a team, and we all know the components that team members consist of. You know, we all need contractors, we need real estate agents, uh, we need closing attorneys, we need title people, we need money people. And, and, and so we all know that, and so the question comes in, A, why do we not all do it? But most importantly, the people that do develop these teams, one thing I see all the time is them losing their team members. And, and a lot of times the reason we lose our team members in this business is that we do not set up the relationships the right way. So Jermaine here stopped by the office. Jermaine, how long have you and I have been working together? Seven years. Yeah, we've been working together for, for, for quite, a, quite a long time in, in some kind of different capacities. And Jermaine Crawford, he's a contractor, okay? Absolutely critical to someone like myself from two perspectives. One, if we ever need our own properties done, right? Yeah. But two, I've also sent business to you, right? Yep. So that's the other thing that if you're an investor, let's say a wholesaler, the critical thing about having someone like a Jermaine on your team is that it gives us the ability to sell more inventory because we could then pass Jermaine on to our back end buyers. So if we got a buyer from Wyoming, or if we got a buyer from Israel, or if we got a buyer here in Atlanta that does not need, does not have any kind of construction set up, having someone like Jermaine and the team is absolutely critical because it, it, give, it gives us the ability to do more deals, okay? Now, how many crews do you run about? Uh, currently about six crews. Okay, so you run six crews. The number one thing, when you're looking for a contractor, do not just go with a general contractor that has the ability to do one job. Is it safe to say that you can expand beyond those crews? We can. We can. Now, what was the conversation you and I just got done about me doing, about you doing some deals for me where? Florida. Florida. See, here's the other thing that I always encourage people to do. You know, when it comes to general contractors and all that, don't pigeonhole yourself that, you know, this general contractor is willing to go 10 miles from his house and do all that. Not only is, is Jermaine able to handle our Georgia business, but he's also able to handle our Florida business. Now, here's the thing I want to hit on that, that I kind of mentioned in terms of people losing their team members. If you don't set up the right relationship with your team members, you can get a great contractor like Jermaine into your world and you can lose them just like that. Now, I know we didn't plan this. What's one way somebody would lose your business? Um, I guess if financial reasons. Without even pre-planning this, I knew that your answer would be something along the lines of financial reasons. Now, most people think when, when someone like a Jermaine says that somebody could lose his business from a financial standpoint, they think, and probably you're referring to, not getting paid on the job, let's say, for instance, or maybe holding your money, or maybe going overboard inspections and all that. Matter of fact, it reminds me, remember that deal we did with that investor from California? Okay. Oh yeah, so, yeah. so there you go. So yeah. there was, actually, I was sending somebody about a year and a half ago, <laughs> uh, Jermaine almost ended up going after <laughs> suing them because they were holding your money, right? That is correct. And, and, you, and no matter what happened in the end, you're never gonna do business with that investor, right? That's correct. But let me tell you something else that's very, very important. How you treat your team members, and especially contractors on the front end, is very important. So let me tell you what I do with Jermaine. Here's how it works. If we have a piece of property that we need a bid done on. Jermaine or one of his team members will go, they'll do a bid, okay? Here's what happens to us as investors many times. You tie up someone's, someone's like Jermaine's time. For instance, you, tie, you send them to 20 different jobs and then you do none of those jobs and in the end, Jermaine starts looking at this and saying, well, you know what? It's not worth for me to work with this investor. So this is the deal I have with Jermaine that you need to think about working with your key team members. When Jermaine go, goes bids out a job, let's say we need some numbers for a particular job. If I end up buying the property and we need fixing the property, he automatically gets the job. He knows he's not out there competing against 100,000 other GCs. Now I know in the beginning you have to earn someone's business, but ultimately you want to be loyal to your members. Number two, let's say I buy the property, as just happened in that Alpharetta deal, right? Yep. He spent some time out there, he went out there on a deal that I thought I was going to buy, fix, and sell. I bought it, but I didn't end up fixing and selling it. Somebody came in and they basically gave us a terrific price and I ended up selling it. I still cut a check to Jermaine for $500. Simple as that. So you see that front end 
relationship structuring when working with key team members is very important. Now, I made quite a bit of money on that deal that I just referred to. It made all the sense for me to pay him $500 for his time. Now, had I not bought that property, I wouldn't have paid him. So that's where we both assume some risk. But the bottom line is this, if you're making money, there's nothing wrong with you spreading it out to all your key members. That's how you gotta be thinking about, that's how you get the good team members and that's how you keep the good team members. Hey, I hope that helps. You guys know what we do here. We do a ton of deals and we coach people to do uh, a ton of deals also. So if you're wanting to learn more about how I could personally work with you in my one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring program, I could help you design a business that gives you the ability to do just a couple deals here and there, all the way to this size of a business that has the ability to do you know, upwards of eight to 10 deals on a weekly basis. So number one, if you're a buyer of real estate in the Georgia market, specifically concentrated in Atlanta, you need to be on our buyer's list. By now, you should see an email scrolling across the screen. That's my personal email. Just email me to add you to our buyer's list, put your contact information, on a daily basis, you're gonna get one, two, sometimes as many as three great off-market deals that both have equity and uh, ROI cash flow in them. The other thing we do here is I work with individuals myself and I help people develop very strategic, very long-lasting real estate investment businesses. So if you wanna learn more about how I could help you, again, by now you'll see my email scrolling across the screen, send me an email, tell me what I could do to help you. I'll call you, I'll tell you about my one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Or right below this video, there's a link to my website, coachingbypeter.com. Go to that link, you'll learn more about me, learn more about my coaching program, and what I could do to help you. Remember, when you're developing a team around you, the way you keep good people is make sure you financially structure everything the right way. Thanks, guys.